Hello, welcome. This is Blockchain Bloom, the Blockchain Educator. I'm Attila Pinke. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about this grayscale win over SEC. And this is the reason why we could see now Bitcoin going all the way up to 28,000 in pretty short time. Okay, the second thing I would like to talk about that Elon Musk's X you know, ask Twitter, but X moves closer to crypto payment with a new state and li state license. And we have actually now Hashkey serving uh, retail customers in Hong Kong. You know, they can uh, use their crypto service since the 28th of August. You know, they got licenses on the 3rd of August, but actually uh, now it is live since the 28th. So now this is actually on. Guys, these will be in today's video. And don't forget, every single day, I bring you fresh cryptocurrency and um, blockchain-related uh, content. So if you do not want to miss a single thing, you know, keep yourself up to date, then simply just subscribe. Because first, I'm making you <coughs> short videos every... <coughs> and lost my voice. So sorry, uh, every single day, a couple of them. And, uh, you know, between Monday and Friday, you're getting these longer videos where I get more into the details. So, very simple, subscribe bell button, all, oh, that's it. And then you won't miss a single thing. And also, hit the like button if you like this kind of content. Okay, and the market looks like the following. So, Bitcoin went up 5.5%. We haven't seen Bitcoin going up like this for a while. Ethereum, almost 5%. Bitcoin, 27,404. Why Ethereum, 1,719 US dollar. When we're looking at the top gainers, tax, 18%. Tonecoin, 16. Bitcoin Cash, 13. And some other winners we have here. Do we have losers? Not really. Monero went down 1%. And the others, you know... Uh, even this one is not significant. So this is how the top uh, 100 uh, looks like. When we're looking at here, the candlestick chart, we can see here on the daily, this one yesterday, which went all the way up uh, to uh, 28,180 something. Uh, so just above 28,000. And then, uh, you know, it came down a little bit. On the daily, we did close about the 200-day moving average. However, when we're looking at on the weekly, then actually uh, we were uh, rejected because the close uh, just didn't happen. But the week hasn't finished. Okay, this is actually uh, important. So what now I'm watching is that can we now move further up? Because... Two things. Here we have this, uh, you know, uh, trend line, uh, you know, which can, uh, which moved here, uh, worked here uh, previously as um, support, could be a resistance. So it would be, I would turn a bit more bullish when we are actually closing above this uh, 29,200 ish kind of. So move uh, upwards. And also it when we're looking at we are still in the downwards trend here so going down here's another and if if we cannot go above this one here around above 30,000 really then we're forming another lower high and then we can come further down and continue to our journey um, closer to the 20, 22, 22 we're going to see it you know wherever the support uh, levels are so uh, well this was actually great for a start but is now this strong enough in the short term we could be even bearish in long term these are definitely uh, great news what happened yesterday uh, by the way uh, news then uh, tomorrow tomorrow on the 30 uh, first uh, of uh, August, the new PCE uh, data will come out, and the forecast is now 3.3 uh, percent. And then this is this is also like CPI, also important, maybe sometimes even more important. And uh, then now let's move on to the first topic. And the first topic, why we went up yesterday, it was because grayscale uh, kind of uh, won against the SEC. So this case went on for more than a year. It has started in June back in 2022. And now it looks like that actually now it looks like that the, that the grayscale uh, won over uh, the SEC. So the 
court sided with Grayscale in lawsuit against the SEC, with uh, which had denied the company's application to convert Grayscale Bitcoin Trust to an ETF. And, uh, well, they were basically saying that, um, you know, the explanation why they did it, why they denied the application, it just wasn't correct. So um, the thing is, they didn't explain it uh, well enough. And, uh, yeah, well, the SEC's reaction was, we are reviewing the court's decision to determine next steps. So we're going to see what they're going to do. You know, Grayscale Investment, which manages the world's biggest crypto fund, really, CD, they're the biggest, started, uh, had this lawsuit uh, starting back in, in June 2022. And uh, the thing is that, you know, this is not not the first lose for the, for the SEC. They have many cases going on in this crypto world, but, uh, you know, recently we had uh, against the, the XRP, they couldn't really uh, win that one uh, totally. That went on for years. Now, this one, more than a year, and again, it comes out, they kind of lose. Okay, we will see what they're going to move, uh, and what will be their, their, their move. Um, will, they, will they leave it like this? But many people are saying that, you know, this is what basically everybody sees in the headlines now, that the SEC is losing, Bitcoin winning, Grayscale winning, XRP winning. So this is all bullish for crypto, and people are less and less worried about the SEC. There are so many people today saying that uh, Gary Gensler and the others shouldn't really try this hard to to make it impossible in the United States, uh, you know, uh, the cryptocurrency development. And, uh, of course, the another thing is that, um, you know, SEC's first deadlines to approve seven Bitcoin ETFs coming over the next week. So this is pretty soon. Here is the list. Look at this. Um, even the BlackRock's ETFs, very first deadline, it will be on the 2nd of September, so next week. But we have seven of them. And, um, of course, the majority is saying that this will be probably approved rather beginning of next year so they pushing it further but there is the possibility at least that uh, they could be approved even uh next week and this can actually you know increase things even more um but i wouldn't run uh, that far uh, at the moment this whatever right now it's still uh, uh great news for 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 crypto and you know also uh, experts saying that it helps uh, to to uh, accept the first Bitcoin spot ETF. And if that start, you know, they're talking about uh, really other things here because, you know, the SEC has improved already the, the Bitcoin future ETFs. So that's okay with them. So probably the, the spot one is coming as well. Okay, anyway, moving to the next topic. Uh, X, I wanted to say Twitter, but, you know, I so got used to it. So anyway, X uh, moves closer to crypto payments with a new state license. So we do know that Elon Musk would like to uh, really be uh, participate in the financial service sector with uh, X. And, uh, well, they made another move, uh, got uh, permission uh, in a new state. So this time, Rhode Island's regulator have granted X a currency transmitter license, making a step forward for the company foray into the financial service sector. So the license is legally required for companies conducting financial activities on behalf of users related to sending and receiving money, definition that includes both fiat and crypto assets. So the approval will uh, allow for X to custody, transfer, and exchange digital currencies. And why source have suggested that X uh, upcoming payment uh, feature will initially only offer support for fiat currencies. Musk has reportedly instructed developers at X to build the platform payment system in such a way that crypto functionality can be added in the future. So 
definitely planning something with uh, crypto. And the approval comes nearly two months after X secured uh, money transmitter license in Michigan, Missouri, and New Hampshire, which were all approved on the 5th of uh, July. So X's latest license marks this one, uh, a total of seven American states it's secured transmitter license in. So they okay already in seven states, and this one was just uh, added. So, according to the plan, I guess. Right, and the last topic uh, today is that Hashkey, you know, the first crypto exchange in Hong Kong, which can serve um, retail um, uh, investors, uh, has really uh, started their service already on the 28th of uh, August. <laughs> So I did talk about when Hashkey got the necessary licenses, the Type 1 and Type 7 license on the 3rd of August. But now, on the 28th uh, of uh, August, uh, they have actually really started to launch their retail trading service uh, to, to, to ch uh, Chinese customers. And um, initially, they offer Bitcoin and ethereum uh, trading pairs with hong kong dollar and it plans to list uh, you know further tokens following the launch uh, for retail users they also announced that uh, they support both united states dollar and hong kong dollar deposit and uh, withdraw so when it comes to deposit and, and, and withdraw and they have huge hopes that the exchange aims to onboard 500,000 and 1 million so between that uh users by the end of 2023 and, you know, the journey has started to make Hong Kong a crypto hub. Uh, Hashkey is the first one which has started the service for retail uh, investors. Um, yeah, so we're going to see how this story is going to continue. Guys, that's it for today. Don't forget, every single day I make you fresh cryptocurrency and blockchain content. So if you do not want to miss a single thing, what's happening here, then simply subscribe to the YouTube channel Blockchain Bloom. And also hit the like button if you like this kind of content. Uh, today you will get other short videos as well, like every single day. And yeah, I'm back tomorrow with the freshest. Have a good one. Bye-bye.